I, um, I learned about Florence through uh, an alumni of one of the schools there and made my way there basically looking for a school that taught uh, craft um, more than ideas and creativity. I felt very much that I wanted to learn my ABCs before writing a novel. And um, I found uh, Florence Academy, found the FAA, which was fantastic and very much like a boot camp and focused on the art. And um, going through it was a little painful, but it definitely drove a huge passion for this specific thing. Um, and it was a fantastic experience and definitely kind of set in stone what I wanted to do. Because I was always interested in art and was good at it in school, but really didn't know I wanted to do it until completely investing so much into um, learning about it as a craft or painting and drawing anyway. I love Ilya Repin, who's uh, a Russian 19th century painter. And then there's the more popular ones like John Singer Sargent, Sargent and Rayburn, who I was just looking at in the National Gallery. Um, and uh, I'm hugely into uh, people that used to paint a lot of animal painters. So Rosa Bonner, Landseer, people like that. Um, and a lot more Russian painters, actually. I love the landscapes that a lot of Russians do. So uh, Shishkin and I mean, there's really so many that I could list. And I think it really varies on the projects and what I'm trying to push in my own work on who I look at. And sometimes people that beforehand I hadn't really, you know, I hadn't really been interested in, depending on what I'm working on, I suddenly become extremely interested in them and have a completely different opinion. Because Nyman's is this beautiful National Trust property in West Sussex and it used to be in my family and um, basically German Jew immigrants, they came, tried to completely anglify themselves, um, joined Church of England, bought a country home and then designed it to look a certain way to kind of blend in with Scottish or English manners um, and castles and then the whole thing burnt down. And the whole garden is completely eclectic. And there's a little statuette uh, that's dedicated to my great granny, granny, who was an orphan. That's like a little girl holding a, a bird feeder, which was really sweet as well. But yeah, the whole garden was amazing. And painting it and being around it was hugely expire, inspiring. And um, yeah, no, it was great. And then it was wonderful being able to exhibit there for a month, having the artwork go in. And uh, the reception I got that I didn't expect from a National Trust property, especially such a, uh, it's quite popular, but not many people know, know about it. Um, and I got lots of emails from people that maybe bought the work and they were like, uh, I'm so excited to have this piece. I've walked down the same lane with my mother for however long or uh, family members who bought pieces that, you know, people who got married in certain places or it's been really, really nice and very uh, like intimate. I'd never actually been through a big mountain range before. So not only was I experienced Pakistan for the first time, but also these massive mountains that were cascading um, around me. And uh, it was incredible. And it was completely going through it. You start in Islamabad that's quite hot and humid. And then you drive up to this place called Batakundi, which is like being in the Alps. It's very green. There's lots of goats. It's kind of cold. And then you go forward a few hours and then you're in Chilas, which is like Mars. There's no plants anywhere. It's 40 degrees. I mean, we were driving along and within 30 minutes, it went from about 15 degrees to 40. It was like being in a fever. And then all of the vegetation is gone and the water is brown. And then you go a little bit further and the biome changes again completely. And it was just completely surreal driving through a country like that and also experiencing the people and the culture. I think it was the first time I'd ever been in a country where being a tourist was, was, it was well like, received. So I used to going to European countries and the tourist is not a very popular person. But then there you get you know, lots of the women walking by shaking your hand in like the rural areas. We would go and paint uh, kind of in some 
you know, some path sort of in the middle of nowhere. And then lots of these women would be walking to their houses that were also in the middle of nowhere. You could barely even see them. And then they'd be shaking your hand and saying, Salaam Alaikum. And you're like, wow, you actually don't mind me being here. This is very surreal. Um, and then at the end of the trip, the wonderful um, man who cre created it, curated it, uh, called Ahmad, who runs uh, Dastan Goy Gallery, who basically represented the whole trip. They um, did an exhibition and some of the members of the royal families from those regions even came and it ended up being this hugely, you know, uh, it was so interesting for a lot of the people there because they knew a lot of these points and it was really enlightening and wonderful and I definitely want to go back. And I'm currently working on bigger pieces from the smaller pieces I made, so it's continuing. Very different, um, especially because I trained in portraiture, so that's something that's very specifically taught. And a lot of the, a lot of the reasons that we train with uh, people, so the nude and portraits, is because we're so sensitive to what a person looks like, what an individual looks like. But if anything's wrong, it's very easy to see. And then landscapes, uh, I came into after I finished school, so fairly recently. And usually with like plain air, it's kind of a I don't know, a maximum of kind of three hours-ish, maybe longer if it's a very constant day and the light doesn't change too much. But it's much more fun. <laughs> and there's much more color and there's much, much more going on. You can be a bit more abstract and you're getting more of a kind of a first impression uh -huh. than a focused study on a, on a face. So they, they are kind of fun in different ways. I find portraits more puzzles. Mm -hmm. And um, especially when you have like a big portrait for me is something that has got to be well organized and uh, uh, things to consider about the, the person and how they are and how they act and how they sit. And it's long-term observation. So somebody could sit down for me for a day, but it's the first sitting. They're a bit kind of uptight. They're not sitting right. You have to wait for them to relax. And then they cock their head in a certain way. And then you really get to know who they are. And then you can kind of paint that while a lot of the plein air is a bit more quick and impressionistic and fun. And I'm only just getting into more observed landscapes. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure I'll find more similarities actually yeah. as I work through them. Um, yeah, I mean, probably. I definitely don't want to do the same thing mm -hmm. over and over again. I want to keep exploring. And I'm also, I also know that uh, with or without art, I would still want to travel and, uh, I mean, yeah, a lot of traveling. So Pakistan's one thing that I'm uh, going for. And then also making bigger and bigger work and trying to do more focused landscapes, which I wasn't doing before. And my next project is I'm going to Kenya and I'm going to go look at uh, small scale mining communities in Kenya when they mine, uh, they mine gold. And so, and I'll go do that for a month and do the same sort of thing as Naiman's in Pakistan studies and then plan larger pieces and maybe portraits of the people working and, um, or in certain charities. And the whole thing follows a series of, from the miners to like the luxury markets that the gold goes to. So maybe even the people wearing the jewelry and kind of painting journalism, sort of, a uh, sort of mix of that. But, um, I think as long as my work keeps me exploring things and I keep finding different ways to look at things and changing my own perception, um, then I'll be happy. And then, and then, yeah, I think the work will follow as my life goes on and things will change.